Hello beautiful world and welcome to Post Game with Simone. I am your host, Simone Deloach. And in this episode, I get the chance to talk to Mr. George Andrews, who was a diver at Indiana University between the years of 2010 through 2014. As he walks us through his beautiful life and the journey that he had at Indiana, he shares a little bit about some of the adversities he faced with mental health, specifically around anxiety and what that looked like for him. Um, within this episode, he shares the importance of family and the importance of finding connection and somebody to trust and to talk to. And so I hope that in this story and in, in him sharing his story that you're able to find a little bit of yours in, within his, as we all need somebody to talk to, right? Uh, we can't do this life that we love and that we want to grow in alone. We have to have community. And so George was wonderful enough to share that with us tonight and I hope you enjoy it. I know I did, I had a good time. Uh, catching up with an old friend. So without further ado, George Andrews. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Mr. George, welcome. How are you doing? Fun. I'm well. I'm. I, it's a beautiful Sunday. Uh, I appreciate you joining us for the conversation post game. Um, yeah, <laughs> I know this is something you and I have talked about for a while, uh, and I'm just so thankful that you could be here to share your story with us. Yeah, I've been really excited to have the conversation. I know I was a little, um, I was a little busy the last week or so, but we got it together. We found we, some time. We got it together. You know, that <laughs> happens, and that's a part of the process, right? So yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to leave it up to you to introduce you, introduce yourself, uh, tell the people who you are, and and how you got into your sport, and just. As much as detail, I'm going to ask some questions later, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> awesome. Well, my name's George. I dove yes. for Indiana University. Simone and I were the same year in school. Yes, I was there from 99% sure. I was there from 2010 mm -hmm. to 2014. Mm -hmm. I dove competitively. Oh, probably only, I would only consider my Indiana years as my competitive years. Before mm -hmm. that, I was just a high school diver, which was really weird for Indiana specifically to take somebody that at my skill level, but I'm glad that they did. Um, I got into diving because I honestly just wanted a winter sport in high school and I just picked it up really well. I was actually a volleyball player and before that I played soccer and baseball. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. So Chicago, uh, local Chicago North Northerner, if I guess that's what you call <laughs> those up there. How, how does one get into diving? Because to be honest, coming from Texas, I know we have diving, but it wasn't until the Indian atmosphere that swimming, you know, and diving were, were, you know, they're huge up there. They're major parts of that university. I they think. are. Um, I, I know a lot of my teammates when they, they got into diving, either like they watched the Olympics and they had mm -hmm. like some sort of club team. Indiana specifically has like the national training center um, even though Purdue is our rival, Purdue has an awesome diving program as yeah. well. Indiana is just, was kind of like the premier diving mm -hmm. state, which is weird because it's Indiana. Like nobody, <laughs> nobody really think of diving, unless you are, are a diver, you don't really associate the two. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot, of, I know a lot of my teammates were like retired gymnasts and gymnastics was okay. just part of their body. So it was an easy transition over. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's weird. It's like not a very, um, publicized sport until the olympic years roll right. around mm -hmm. right yeah that's so yeah. true okay i'm I, I personally have grown um this um awareness that i am afraid of heights which is kind of weird because i i do stand about six three so it's like how can you be afraid of heights you're standing way up there but uh <laughs> that was one of our like initiations into the sport like when i first got to indiana they had us dive off one of the highest beams on the outdoor pool yeah to cook hall mm -hmm. um I don't, I can't remember if I did it or not, but I just, I was so like deathly afraid of diving to the death, essentially <laughs> diving <laughs> to those waters. What do you think about when you're going through like your routine, when you're up there and as you're diving, like, what's that process like? Well, so our coaches are really good about telling us you're going to pick one or two things to focus on and you're going to focus on what you are going to do, not what you're not going to do. Okay. So um so Santa starts like I would I'm going to get my arms uh through early and I'm going to commit to my kick out so you pick two things mm -hmm. um so you don't overthink it you're not like processing every little detail and completely yeah. blank on everything which really right. helps because then if they sent you like to do we call them optionals or harder dives 
on like, so I was a tower diver. So on 10 meter, they didn't want you overthinking anything. And they, but they also were confident in your ability to execute and not hurt yourself. And yeah. so you took solace and your coach had your best interest at heart yeah. and wasn't going to send you up to do something that you weren't ready for. Wow. So what is the, hitting the water? Like once you're, you're, you've done the duty, like, I don't know how, what I'm saying, like once you're in the air and you, you've done your acrobatic abilities and you hit the water, like, what is that feeling as far as just holding your breath and releasing it, I guess? <laughs> um, it's well, if it's, if you like executed well, mm -hmm. it's like, adrenaline excitement yeah. happiness joy it's a, it's a huge rush mm -hmm. especially because you're standing and i don't care what anybody tells you i don't care if it's in your like amy Cozet, who is going um an olympic hopeful for us um for yeah. 10 meter in 2021 um oh, yeah. or some like joe Smo standing up there you're afraid it's 10 meters in the yeah. air you're about to throw yourself off that like mm -hmm. you know the human experience <laughs> tells us that like we have our amygdala on our the back of our head that has our fear response right um and some people process fear or um that like raised sympathetic nervous system as like right. fear and like some of us um digest that and we're like oh i'm excited this is right, like okay. and, and that's like an adrenaline junkie and i guess like most divers you would probably lump into the yep. adrenaline junkie yeah. side the yeah. junkie for sure wow <laughs> yeah. i i commend you i mean i that's i think that's a sport that um would be more difficult for just like you said a joe Smo to kind of get into because it is such a adrenaline um nervous rush that i think would happen and then it's safety aspect too right you can't just get up there and just jump off it willy-nilly there's a lot of prep I would think to your body to train it to be in a certain position so you can be safe and survive injury um so I I know some of the things we talked about were along the lines of just identity and, and what Indiana has taught you as far as your diving experience but then getting into some of the the mental health aspect too um what and I, I want you to kind of lead in the direction we go in um but when it can't when it comes to your experience at Indiana uh, we've talked about um, your your identity and, and who you are and how the school itself, the city itself, really opened its arms and embraced you for all of that you are. Um, would you mind speaking a little bit about that and what that was like? Yeah, so I identify as an LGBTQ member. Um, I'm, I'm gay and going, I grew up like on the southwest side of Chicago and it was, I, I would say it was like a little close-minded, um, or at least I felt that way. I projected that onto my surroundings. If it actually was, I don't know, because I didn't give a ton of people the um, the option to accept me for who I was. But when I got to Indiana, um, I felt like I can, I can tr express who I am. And that is attributed to a few different things. Indiana, Bloomington specifically, is a very liberal pocket um, that was more accepting to queer individuals than maybe some other parts of the state, mm -hmm. um, which was surprising for me. And also I was lucky enough to come into a team that had other queer people on it. Yeah. Um, and so that it was an easier transition for me to come out. And then I met some people on some other athletic teams that are out, but I'm not, I don't like, I don't yeah, need yeah. to tell their stories for them, mm -hmm. um, which made it a lot easier, especially being in the coming, the athletic world doesn't always seem like it's the best. It's very cohesive to a queer person. It seems like you're going to be that, mm -hmm. that jock or mm -hmm. queer. And, it, and I found kind of a marriage between the two yeah. because queer doesn't necessarily have to stigmatize anything other than who you love right yeah, it doesn't right. physically tell you what you look like or what you're going to act like it's just who you are looking to settle down with or find a partnership with and it was really nice to go be accepted into a sporting community where I never felt like that was an issue that that part of myself was always accepted by any everybody not just the swimming and diving team but all the teams that I interacted with Yes, I, I love that because I, I think I would believe that that would be um, some of the the animosity or maybe not even animosity, but some of the, the resistance right towards any individual coming out if they are um, a sports individual, if they have a sport is is the ridicule or, or the, the idea that I am not 
you know, I'm no longer this identity, now I'm this, but it's like, we can be both uh, because we are multiple things and we can exist in that space. Um, and so you were, you were one of the lucky ones that had not only a sport that accepted, but some teammates who rallied around you. Um, we've spoken about family and what that means. Uh, mm -hmm. Share a little bit about that, if you will. And, uh oh. It Sorry, my my neighbors are doing construction. It seems oh, like okay, yeah, it's like a yeah. clogging commercial. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Let's see if I can go into the living room or something. Okay. Um. um so, family, I mm -hmm. um always aspire to have like a family unit, and um being in the queer community. You, we focus a lot on our chosen family mm -hmm. and people that we keep around us because they embody maybe a trait that we aspire, we want to nurture in ourselves and they're uplifting for us. And I really think I found a lot of that in my teammates at Indiana too. And so like your team became, became your chosen family. It was like chosen because you chose to go to that school, right. mm -hmm. but um, it was very uplifting to be a part of something where I knew I could lean on other people and have that support system because athletics college athletics is a <laughs> it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot to handle yeah it's a lot and so like having those people that you can just fall back on to was just such a relief I don't know any better way to describe it like when you're just having a hard day at practice or a hard day with school or even something socially um it was amazing to have these people that maybe weren't blood related but mm -hmm. you felt like you can trust with like your life if you needed to yeah yes and many times we had to right <laughs> um yeah. no I I, re I relate to that because it, it was it was one thing to have like classmates um, who shared the same um, anxieties, if you will, about a particular assignment that we had to do. But it was another thing to have an, an individual literally running sprints next to you, dying, like just suffering the same, <laughs> the same outcomes as you, um, putting your body through all these rigorous workouts um, and being able to high five them go to the locker room and just decompress with them, right? Um, share lunches, share meals, um, ride together. Um, so yes, I definitely understand that, that need to have support um, in kind of every pocket that we were existing as a student athlete at a university. Um, and that kind of brings me into the, the other aspect that we talked about previously, as far as mental health, we are, as, as much as it's encouraged and as, as legal as it is to be an 18 year old adult, I don't know about you, but I was looking back at that young, that young woman, she was very much still childlike. <laughs> she was, I mean, still figuring out things, even looking back now, I'm like, how did I survive the world um, with just such, um, what's what I'm looking for? Uh, naivety, if you will. Right. Um, and so looking and searching for leadership, looking and searching for family, like you said, uh, share a little bit about that journey um, in terms of what you had and maybe something that you wish you could have had more of or more resources for. Oh, cool. Um, so going into Indiana, you feel like when you when you go into college, you feel like I'm an adult. I made it through high yeah. school. This is right. my time on my <laughs> own. And you have this like weird transition year where you live in the dorms. Um, and looking back on it, like you said, like I was, I did not have life experience. I had like, everything had been, I might've thought I was independent living under my parents' roof, getting paid for by my parents. But like, mm -hmm. it's it, like, once you take that safety net out, it's a little scary. It's exciting for sure. Um, and that learning experience, you, I feel like, like for athletes, you get taken out of one kind of very structured situation, which is your home life. And you get put into another which is your your sport, your practice, your weight training, your conditioning, your your meets or games, um, and your coach becomes like that. I I don't want to say parental figure, but they do. They become like this authority figure because you're going. You have. I feel like we replace that that authority figure like subconsciously, mm -hmm. and so like having a coach that has your back like not only in like on the court in the pool on the field 
Um, but also like personally, somebody I can trust, like if I'm having an issue, I can go talk to as well. It's super important. And I, I think we talked about this a little bit and that's like kind of what I want to like give give advice to on like a, just the coaching staff in general yeah, yeah. have such an impact on like these kids' lives. Yeah. And they are like, whether they're adults or not, they're still kids. Like they're still learning themselves. I like still feel like I'm a child sometimes and uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. closing in that 30 mark. <laughs> Oof, it's coming. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's too soon. Um, yeah. yeah, it was, it was an awesome way to teach teach me um personally organization dedication follow through Mm -hmm. through indiana athletics um and it was kind of a cool little bridge because i had like a parental figure but wasn't like the extent um and but sometimes they like you have to find that relationship with your coach and if he does they he or she or they don't embody that type of relationship with you like having some sort of resource that could um yeah give you that and like we like yeah. and so I found some like I went and talked to some mental health professionals because I struggled with anxiety when I first got to Indiana and still on and off struggle with anxiety um and I'm sure she wouldn't mind if I used her name but Maddie White she was an associate yeah. athletic director. Yeah, right? she was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she was, like literally changed my life. And I texted yeah. her after we talked the last time. Oh, so I? Was, <laughs> <laughs> and I was love like, you, Maddie. Yes. And like you were like teaching yeah. me coping strategies and just how to view the world from this scary place as like somebody that's seen as an adult but still feels like a child. Like, right. Yeah. And it was wonder. It was wonderful that Indiana had that, um, and I just and Maddie was in my life. Um, they gave resources out. I don't like. Mm-hmm. I feel like everybody can be better. Like steering okay. where you should go and having more than one person to talk to because if you talk to any mental health professional, they'll tell you to shop around because one therapist does not fit all. Right. For right. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, And I I appreciate you bringing that up and using that word, the parental figure, because I know that's something we talked about previously. And you're very much right. It's almost like our parents hand us over, right? And 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 are entrusting of these coaches. I know that's one thing in my college visit when I went to Indiana um, and getting feedback from my parents, you know, they felt very comfortable with handing me over to complete strangers to help raise me in in that next season. Um, And so it is is a big responsibility because coaches... They're there for so much more than um, who they bring to the table, who they bring to the sport, who they bring to the team. You know, they got to win games. They got to win meets. They have to put numbers to the books. And uh, I, I don't know coaching because I'm not a coach myself, but I can understand that that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. And so you would you would hope that the the mental stability of your athletes that you're bringing is a part of that um, treatment plan, if you will. It is a part of that that plan, um, but it also can seem like a very easy thing to let slip through the cracks. Yeah. Um, so we were blessed with Maddie White. We can say her name. I totally reached out to her and I was like, Maddie, I hope you are doing well. And I just want you to know that a thousand years later, you were still making a difference <laughs> in our lives. Um, and so to, to speak to that point, you know, I think something that, athletic programs could benefit from is to have more resources like that that aren't necessarily within the coaching staff right but are a part of the athletic experience Um, because she was in a totally different building than I think you and I Mm -hmm. Uh, we had to go find her which I think was a lot of a lot of the release right because it almost felt like we were walking away from our practice field our practice building and entering into a very safe place separate from it Yes. And I don't actually remember what Maddie's, I don't know if that was Maddie's role within the university or she was just like a really good person that mm. saw us that wanted help and just lent us that help. Right. Because we, I don't, I don't know how, if you did this, but I was sent, um, sent, I, my coaches and I had a discussion and they wanted to send me to like a psychologist, a psychiatrist, because I was having trouble sleeping. Like my anxiety was like, my anxiety was a little uncontrolled and then my grades were getting affected. And I was always like a stellar student yeah. and to like come out of my 
freshman year with like just above a B average was traumatizing for me, yeah. especially because I wanted to go to grad school. And then Maddie, like being able to talk to Matt, I think it took me like over a year to find Maddie specifically. Yeah. Um, but once I started talking to her, like, I, I don't think I've ever told her this part, but like my grades went from like a B average, like I graduated, like my my senior year, I didn't get, I didn't get anything lower than an A minus, like oh. on anything. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and like, and I, I truly attribute that to like my mental, like my yeah. mental health, and like having these coping strategies with anxiety. Because uh, medication, though, helps a ton of people, was not helping me. They like tried to put me on anti-anxiety medications, and it did absolutely nothing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and Maddie gave me these strategies out that I could reframe my thinking that really just changed my world. Yes. I think coming into my, my mid twenties, late twenties now, ooh, um, <laughs> I, I've realized I've come to the realization that it is very much a full body, full body experience. You have to really treat every aspect, mental, physical, spiritual. I mean, they all are very much married to each other. Um, and as an athlete, I don't think there's enough, productivity and understanding and helping student athletes realize that. Um, when I wasn't doing well in school, I just devoted my life to the sport. And when I couldn't play the sport due to injury, I had, I had nothing else but to devote myself to the athletic or to the academics. And I think, you know, there is, there should be a balance in which you could do both and live successfully in, in each and not have to feel resentment towards the other. Um, so you, you reached out, you had, um, a psycholo- psychologist and a psychiatrist that were trying to assist you in what that was, what your experience was. Um, did you find it helpful? <clears throat> um, I did. I thought it was good that the coaching staff and the athletic department had those resources, yeah. but the people, the two individuals that, that I went to see before I found Maddie did were not a good fit for me okay um I and it's I like I have a my everybody's life experience is so different than everybody else's so um the two individuals they sent me to were just like on the upper side of middle-aged white guys and I just like Mm -hmm. It's, I just don't connect all that well sometimes with like especially like mental health wise I can I can really ham it up when it comes to like workouts sports and whatnot um and make those connections but when it comes to my mental health it's just not something I was comfortable talking like really opening up about um and I think Maddie provided that space that was just so comfortable and if they just had more opportunities to um, pick from different people with different backgrounds um, that can really speak to you that really help you as an individual like mm-hmm. and you have a big enough you have enough um, student athletes that having more than one mental health person on staff is right yes that's important really <laughs> right absolutely thousands of students and only one resource I know mm-hmm. they introduced us to we talked about him um, but he I think was really located in Indianapolis but would yeah. come and visit and have seminars with each team um and so it was like interesting because I think that's really where uh I got into wanting to do this field of work was if you're going to be a mental health provider why aren't you where I can have like readily access to you right if I'm going to plan a meeting and it's three weeks out so much so much stuff can happen between that time um and so I, I I I I'm with you on having multiple resources, multiple lives, um, different uh, genres of people who, who could be accessible. Yeah. Um, with that being said, do you think you would be, or you would do some mentorship if you could give back to the university? Um, I, I honestly think I would. I love being in like a role that I can help guide and like grow with somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always really enjoyed that, whether it be coaching, because like we coached our summer camps um, at Indiana. I did a little coaching when I moved to Arizona for the club team out there. Um, I, and now like I go to, I like personal train on the side just because I like that coaching aspect and I'm a physical therapist. So I'm coaching people how to correct their movement patterns every day and how to just fix little subtleties in their life to like take them out of pain or positions that might be exacerbating what whatever their issue is so that's like just something I really enjoy is just helping somebody so I would 
100% love like a mentorship program even if it's just like a phone call like yeah. once or twice a week and just text me whenever mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. yeah because at the end of the day like you said it's about the the community the family that you create and we we understand as a, as lives that experience the importance of having one or two people again outside of our sport outside of our our um immediate circle that could that could pose input and could give give sound not necessarily advice but just be there yeah. um and I, I still have many of those relationships now I, every i found myself everywhere i go every city that i move to i i always find myself being adopted by a family and it's usually a husband and wife and i, I mean they treat me as if i am their own and um i cherish and you know can appreciate those relationships looking back now because i don't I don't know who, how I would have made it had it not been for something like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's actually, it was, I, I don't know if this is like actually your idea, but that's such a good idea, like a mentorship program. Like you have like a little, you don't even need a head shot, but a little like blurb, like I'm George, I, read, I went to Indiana, yeah. this, this is what I do now. Mm-hmm. Like here's some identifiers about me. Um, if you want to use me as your mentor, like shoot me an email and like let's set something up and it doesn't matter what team you are on, but yeah. this is like, my background is in I like that and right? it, 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 we're inviting the student athletes to find us versus like hey I'm here let's talk we've been paired together and it's like well sometimes pairings don't always you know yeah work together cool. but you yeah. but you as a student can pick and choose there's a whole array of people who are available I like that yeah, did we just start something George <laughs> You said program. Where are you? <laughs> oh, we. Should, I mean, uh, hey, we're we're offering it here. Here it is. Um. So I have a couple more questions for you before we wrap up, and I do definitely appreciate you being vulnerable with me in this space. Um. This is what this is about. Post game is very much about the transitions of life, right? Not only the transition from our homes to a foreign place of a university, but from there and beyond. Um. Because I think a lot of us personally wasn't all the way ready for basketball to stop. Yeah. I was blessed with the opportunity to go overseas for a little bit and um, enjoyed my Euro trip if it was, if, if I could name it that. Um, but then my body was just like, girl, if you don't stop, I'm going. <laughs> it, like it, it was physically like the clock was ticking on just it shutting down completely. And Mentally, I felt like I was, I mean, we were, we were trained to keep going the next one, the next one, the next one. And so I feel like if my body was in a better shape, I probably would be. But, um, but that transition, right, from when we stop diving, when we stop playing, um, did you feel prepared for that? And if you were, what were some things that worked for you and what things could have been better? Um, I, we talked about, I don't know if it, it was Indiana specifically or like a coach that I had. But they explained, like, when I feel like IU had this, like, transition program, or tried to at least, um, and they're, they, 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 like, you're going to grief the loss of your sport. They're like, it's going to sound silly, but this has been such a part of your life for so long, and then you're just going to stop. And they're like, and so just let your, and um, I was not prepared, because yeah. I was like, sure, I'd like, lost, and like, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, that's, like, I've, like, experienced loss in my life, and, like, it's just, I'm not diving anymore, like, what do you mean, and then, it's like, and then it happened, and I was like, I'm like, you just kind of lose, like, that purpose, like, this was my reason for coming, like, not, I had two reasons, I, academic was really my main, like, main, but, like, athletic was really high up there, too, and, like, to have one of this, like, central crux of my identity just kind of, like, crumble crumble it was it was traumatizing um right and we like I remember if I'm gonna get a little like I don't know if it's oversharing but like my one of my teammates and I when we finished we went out like because I had nothing else like not nothing else to do I could have been like studying more but like (laughs) I uh we had like one of like like Tuesday Thursday Friday Saturday it's like and then I'm like all before I know it I'm like I don't feel like myself anymore like I just and I was like, I'm like, am I just like substituting, just like trying to keep myself busy so I don't think about this? Yeah. So having just like, I guess, I feel like there was an effort, but like, I don't know if it like, mm-hmm. if I understood fully or if it like, or could have been explained better, but I was not prepared to end. <laughs> no. And, and it's from what it sounds like, you know, your experience, you were trying to numb something, a void, to fill a void and you were filling it with 
the the very much respected and oftentimes looked forward to atmosphere of Indiana. Yeah. I mean, it's springtime. Do you know what those kids are out there doing if they're allowed to with COVID? <laughs> they're out there having a ball, drinking, partying. I mean, that's the kind of the culture of IU. And as an athlete, we don't get, really get to experience that mm-hmm. as much. We do. We have a good time. Yeah. But, you know, there's, there's, you know, we've got to get up to go to practice. We can't really overindulge. And so I, I, I too remember a time in which if there's an opportunity to go out, I was going to because what else would I, was I going to do? Yeah. There was no practice anymore. There was no workouts. And it's just like when you were practicing, so we had one day a week that we were like were able to go out. Nice. And it wasn't like our coach were like, yeah, you go out this day, but that's but it was like Saturday night. We didn't have Sunday practice. And um, so you would we'd have our two days, we had two days almost all year round at the end. Yeah. Um and like and then eight sometimes on top of that. Um uh, and then on you didn't have anything on Sunday. So it's like, get all my school work done. I was done with practice early in the morning on Saturday. And then Saturday night, I'm like, just let your freak flag fly. Just like, <laughs> let loose. like be it like be a college kid. And that was the one time a week that you felt like you can truly just like immerse yourself in yeah. like a traditional college experience versus your uh, like a very very tunnel. yeah structured um yeah. like muscle memory at some point i'm like out of body experience i'm not even there at the workout it's just my body is just so accustomed to what we're doing that it's just like okay i'm here and then i'll go to class and then i'll find a nap somewhere and then i'll go back to practice yeah mm-hmm. absolutely yeah. um but and and it's hard to say because it's like looking back these things could have been better right yeah. um However, as a, again, as a young adult now, I can only look back at those experiences to be helpful in helping me figure out what it is I need to do. It almost kind of kicked me into gear of like, oh shit, this is adulthood. Now I've got to figure out what's next. Um, Of course, guidance and conversations along the way definitely help to make the transition a lot more beautifully, um, you know, organized, but, but it, it almost had to happen that way in order yeah. for me to be where I am today, which is kind of crazy to say. Isn't it wild? And just the that environment too, I, I have to say, looking at like other student athletes that I know functioning in the real, the real world yes. now, yes. Um, we just have such a shared mentality. It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to give it my all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to, and then like, and then I can go and do what I want to do and feel fulfilled about it. But when I have to get my stuff done, I just like, I, I put my, like a pedal to the metal and I just grind. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's what Indiana taught you how to do. It's like, yes. and I, and we talked about this on the phone, like my cute Jeff Huber, my, my coach, my first few years had this saying, like, you don't have to feel good to dive well. Mm-hmm. And it was, it just kind of stuck with me because I'm like, you don't like, I'm not feeling a hundred percent doesn't mean I can't give a hundred percent effort. Like right. I can give my hundred percent for that day and it still be good enough for that day. Right. Yeah. And like that really, I like, I can pretty much sums up my Indiana experience and how it's helped me with yeah. my like real life. Your, your current path, your current career path. Yeah. Um, yeah. Something about athletics, I think helps to ground, grind, grind, helps to ground any individual who chooses to, continue it right I mean because it goes from like t-ball league like I remember YMCA in which we had to guard the person with the same wristband as us I mean it's old school for me and um you know the 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 choice to continue to play because it was fun and because I enjoyed making friends but then it becomes kind of like this business where like um I gotta take care of my body I gotta watch what I eat you know I gotta put you know gain so much to be able to compete to this next level um but the beauty of, of kind of the, the ugly, if you will, side of it is that you really do develop into this, this uh, most dedicated, most hardworking. I mean, I just had a conversation yesterday with somebody that I believe embodies work ethic mm-hmm. just because of, of what the sport has allowed her to become. Yeah. Um, so beautiful. Thank you, George. One of my last questions, and I love to ask this, um, is to wrap it up looking back at 18 year old 19 year old George what would be something you would give to young George um whether it was 
uh, something you spoke, you would tell him, something you would give him. What what kind of um, piece of resistance would you would you provide for him? That is, it's I do like I do a lot of like self reflection and like and I over analyze everything and so like going back and what would I tell and this is gonna sound so cheesy because it's not even like because I'm still working on this to like to this day um, but it's like just be nice to the people you love even when you don't when you're having a bad day because I like can feel I should like a lot better but I withdraw and get very snappy when like especially in Indiana like brought that out to me sometimes because we all know like those four hour days and top of, like a full caseload of work yeah. and like, conditioning and you're just worn and and then somebody that like you really care about like Connor Murphy my roommate uh, and my best friend like we would get we'd be snappy at each other because like we were just drained like it was sometimes it was just mentally draining physically draining emotionally draining and just being able to like tell yourself to just step out of that and like if you're having a bad day set a boundary and just yeah. say like like I, I just need a second I just need a few minutes to myself like I'm just not in a good mood or yeah. just like being honest with how I'm feeling instead of being snappy and trying to be and getting cold and shut down mm -hmm. I think I've that's not cheesy at all. I, I love that. I think that's something we could take take away for today. Like my tomorrow self or my yesterday self, um, be kinder. And I, if I can add to that and just kind of piggyback, I would say be kind to self. Yeah. Um, I am, hi, I'm Simone I, and I am my own worst enemy. Like I am, I beat myself to the bone with some of the things that I say and do to myself as punishment. And I've learned that um, over time. And so I would, I would, in addition to be kind to others, I would tell myself to be kind to yourself, be gentle. She is, we're working it out, sister. <laughs> we are working it out. <laughs> yes, and I needed that reminder too. Yeah. It's really easy to be hard on yourself, right? Mm -hmm. like, just like learning to accept yourself. It's a journey and it's yeah. lifelong, right? <laughs> it's a journey. I took a day off the other week or last week and I was feeling super not proud of it. Like, you should have got, you should have went to work. You know, it's only this many hours you should have went to work. And at the same time, I'm like, no, like a day off did not kill me. Look at me. I'm, I'm several days away from that. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I chose to do that. Yeah. So it's little things like that. I think. Mental health is health. Like you need to take care of yourself, right? Yes. yes. George, I am so beyond proud of you. I adore the crap out of you. I, you were one of the first I, I want to say like outside of my own community of basketball, one of my first relationships outside of my sport that just accepted me and was loving and kind. We had a black, we always had a good time when we went out and um, I will continue to be a supporter of you and everything that you were doing. Um, and then, like, honestly, I just like mirror that right back to you. It's 100% same. Wait, before you go, go, allow me to share this with Hello, you. Hello, beautiful humans. I wanted to interrupt really quick to uh, produce a few resources for you guys. Um, I'm currently actively looking for more, so be on the lookout for more um, below. I will try to link as many as I can below and then add more later. As, of, as for right now, the Human Rights Campaign Foundation is one that I have followed for years. and They're always posting resources, um, articles, and things alike uh, for those in the LGBTQ community, as well as those who are allies, um, whether you have a child or a niece or nephew, uh, family members. Um, this contact information right here are more specific, right, to what you might be looking for, HIV and health equality program, religion and faith, transgender, justice initiative program. Um, you can direct your email questions directly to them and they are really good at getting back um, to those who are looking for something as far as a resource. The next one I have is Psychology Today. As a therapist, as a therapist, uh, I adore this website. I use it myself. It is just like shopping for shoes online. I, 
I promise you, if you're looking for resources in the Austin area, you literally type in Austin, Texas. There's thousands of therapists located and you can be specific about it, right? So you can also add your insurance in there. Um, you can add what you're looking for. If we, George and I talked about anxiety a lot in his podcast. If you're looking for somebody who specifically works with anxiety, you can look there. You can also choose the, the sexual sex orientation of your, of your therapist. I know this is silly, but it does make a difference when you have somebody that you um, can relate to or that you feel comfortable with. So um, there's that option as well. And then just more resources, more resources, more uh uh, the ability to, to make it specific to what you need. The last thing that I have, and I just found this, and I thought it was wonderful, it's um, nine athlete um, mental health resources. Um, and so within this own domain, you have nine links to click on um, in association with your athlete or with um, the resources that you're looking for. So again, George and I talked about anxiety. You click on this one. Um, it brings you right to their site. It gives you a little information about them, about them and what they do, um, current events, um, and just, I'm going to say resources a lot, but a lot of tangible tools that we all can use to be honest. Um, but if you are an athlete and specifically, or if you have an athlete, these are really great tools to use and to pass along. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you guys for watching. Um, and if you want more things like this, let me know. I, I'm definitely looking uh, for more uh, things to pass out after the conversation. So enjoy the rest of your days. Um, be well, treat yourself kindly, and hug a tree. Hug a tree. Um, all right, you guys, be good. See you later. See you next time.